Hey, I'm Julie Lundquist. I'm a professor in the Department of Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences at the University of Colorado Boulder. In my work, I study the wind and wind energy. That's right, because we can harvest energy from the wind. The wind's kinetic energy can be converted into electrical energy with machines called wind turbines. Wind turbines consist of a foundation, a tower, and a nacelle, or hub. Turbines also need a rotor, made up by blades, typically three. The wind turns the blades, which spin a shaft, which connects to a generator and makes electricity. A typical height for the nacelle of a wind turbine is about 80 meters, and the blades can be about 40 meters long. However, some huge wind turbines, twice as big, have recently been built in order to reach the stronger winds higher above the surface to generate more power. Generally, the larger the area of the rotor disc of the turbine, the higher the power production. But most importantly, it's the wind speed which has the strongest impact on the power output from a wind turbine. At low wind speeds, not much power is produced. Turbines don't even start to generate electricity until the winds are two to three meters per second at the nacelle or hub. At moderate wind speeds, power increases exponentially with wind speed. If the wind is too strong, the turbine will have to turn off to prevent damage. Wind is a very valuable energy source. Using the wind for electricity production does not release the carbon dioxide emissions which cause climate change, while many other energy sources do release carbon dioxide. Wind energy also does not need water for electricity production, so water can be used for drinking and agriculture rather than for producing energy. Not only is wind a renewable source of energy, but wind energy is inexpensive compared to other sources of electricity. To harvest the wind efficiently, companies usually build wind turbines in clusters, or so-called wind farms. Some parts of the country have so much wind in space that multiple wind farms are located close together. Determining the best location for a wind farm means considering meteorological, economic, and social aspects. The wind resource is estimated by either taking wind measurements over a number of years or by using numerical weather prediction models to simulate the wind at that site. Access to transmission lines is also critical to site selection. Lines are needed to transport the wind-generated electricity to the urban centers that need the electricity. Sometimes, wind energy developers will choose a site that does not have the best resource, but is in close proximity to transmission lines. Each wind farm has a substation that steps up the electricity to a voltage efficient for long distance transmission. Developers also prefer to choose locations with neighbors who are enthusiastic about wind development, as well as locations without adverse consequences for wildlife. For example, bird migration corridors are being avoided. The United States has great potential for wind energy, with many regions highly suitable for production. Broad, flat areas that experience strong pressure gradient forcing will be reliable sources of wind energy. For example, our heartland in the United States Midwest and Great Plains, from West Texas north through Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and the Dakotas, harvests much of this strong wind. On the other hand, Locations that experience high winds due to temperature differences between the land and the sea can also be optimal sites. For example, this temperature contrast drives strong land sea breezes along much of the east coast of the United States. Other sites experience winds that are accelerated by channeling through terrain, such as the Columbia River Gorge at the border between Oregon and Washington State, or Tehachapi Pass in Southern California. The Department of Energy has researched realistic possibilities where United States wind power will supply 10% of the nation's electrical demand in 2020, 20% 20 in 2030, and 35% in 2050. This would mean that one-third of our electricity needs could be produced by the clean, natural power of the wind. 
The actual resource is much larger, but this wind vision plan accommodates the current state of the U.S. transmission grid. As we continue increasing the percentage of our electricity due to wind energy, scientists and engineers will be investigating important questions about wind energy. Some of these exciting questions on which you might work in your career could be, how to better measure the wind, how to more efficiently operate turbines, or how to design a power grid that accommodates wind energy, solar energy, and electric vehicles.